Come sit down. You can draw a picture and mommy will do this. When Nina Jones was a child, she came to pediatrician Dr. Aaron Heath for all her checkups. Today, she's come full circle, bringing her own son Leland to see Dr. Heath at Tamil Pius Pediatrics in Greenbrae. Leland is here for his two-year checkup and a discussion about immunizations. Do you want him to have a flu vaccine? I no. I honestly think it's a good idea. No? No, okay. I don't do flu. Nina knows she's a little behind on Leland shots. The CDC's recommended vaccine schedule for children from birth through age six includes a series of shots protecting against 14 different diseases. It also lays out a timeline for getting those shots with multiple doses often bundled together in the same visit. And chicken pox, what do you want to do about that? I, you know, I'm really curious about chicken pox. This is the thing. I had chicken pox. <laughs> yeah. So here's how it was no big deal. Some normal healthy kids get bad infections with mm -hmm. chicken pox. Nina is on the fence about two shots in particular for chicken pox, also known as varicella, and for MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. So think about it. Marin County is seeing a steady rise in the number of parents choosing to delay or skip vaccines altogether. In California, by law, children must be immunized against nine diseases, including polio, chicken pox, and measles, before entering kindergarten. But parents can get around the law by signing a personal belief exemption. Since 2004, the number of such exemptions in Marin County has doubled to nearly 8 percent, the highest opt-out rate in the Bay Area and one of the highest in the state. Here's the outbreak of pertussis this year. Pertussis, or whooping cough, is on the rise this year. This trend alarms health officials like Dr. Matt Willis and Sharon Forkel. They see a correlation between the rise in personal belief exemptions and a dangerous dip in herd immunity, a kind of firebreak which guards a community against the rapid spread of contagious diseases. We have many schools in Marin County where the vaccination rates are below the level that we need for herd immunity. We've had outbreaks of varicella, we've had outbreaks of pertussis, a measles outbreak really is more a matter of when and not whether if we don't increase our vaccination rates. Oh, hi, Johan. Hi. Dr. Nelson Branko finds these statistics troubling. As managing partner of Tamil Pius Pediatrics, he decided to draw a line in the sand when it comes to the vaccine for measles to protect his tiniest patients. Measles is dangerous. Uh, infants under one can't be immunized against measles. We're on track to have more cases of measles in the United States this year uh, than we've had in many, many years. In the 2008 outbreak in San Diego, there were 11 children who were ill with measles. Four of them were exposed in their doctor's waiting room. We decided as a practice that we were going to um, require all of the patients in our practice to receive the MMR vaccine by age two, or we would um, uh, ask them to seek care somewhere else. The move goes against the recommendations of his own pediatric academy, but Branko felt he needed to break ranks to show parents how strongly he feels about the vaccine. I've taken care of children in the intensive care unit with whooping cough and with meningitis and who've had uh, measles and uh, after having measles have had brain damage. Most children do just fine with vaccines and are protected against these diseases, which fortunately are not common but would become very common if we weren't vaccinating against them. We have 33 percent of parents opting out. This fall, Willis and Forkel sent a survey to 3,000 parents of kindergartners asking them specific questions about their feelings on vaccines. They're hoping the results will help them better understand what's behind the parental decision to opt out. And the majority of our citizens with personal belief exemptions are actually not choosing to opt out of all vaccines, but only some vaccines. For some people, they don't like necessarily being told to vaccinate their kids. That sentiment was evident when we visited the Tiburon home of Maureen Block. Everything in it is organic, including the chocolate chips. Looking around your kitchen, I mean, this is sort of a study in healthy living yeah. here. All the stuff you have lined up here right, on your I've windowsill. Minerals, liver support. I have a water filter with extra filters on it and a filter under the sink. Maureen is very concerned about toxins in both food and the environment, and for the past 10 years, she's held the firm belief that vaccines contain toxic components. The actual antigen itself isn't dangerous. It's all the adjunctives or the other things added into the vaccine that cause an unknown reaction in a, with the immune system. Block says her skepticism began after her son Nathaniel developed signs of autism at 18 months old. You believe that your son's autism was linked in some ways to the vaccinations he got? 
Autism is a pervasive developmental delay, and I believe that my son's pervasive developmental delay would have not been as severe or profound had he not been vaccinated. I have a lot of sympathy for people who have a child with autism, and I can understand they're trying to find an answer for it. But the link between vaccines and autism is um, probably one of the best studied uh, issues around vaccination. It's interesting that we have such a well-educated community and with 20 plus large studies, including one recent study from the CDC that demonstrates without a doubt that autism and vaccination do not correlate in any way, that there are still people who hold that belief. So he'll do the polio shot today. Dr. Brinkle already discusses the benefits and risks of vaccines with parents on a daily basis. He expects those conversations to increase in January. That's when a new state law takes effect requiring parents to provide proof they've talked with a medical provider before asking for a personal belief exemption. Hey, you're all done. We're hoping the new law will increase vaccination uptake and better protect our community. Hello. By providing providers with the information from our survey about what parents are citing as their specific concerns, that they'll be prepared for those conversations. And we hope that after those conversations, people will feel more secure about making the right decision to vaccinate their children. All done. Good job, sweetie. Yay! <laughs>